Okay, it's finally time to go hands-on with iOS 18. Apple just released the first beta, and today I wanna to show you the completely revamped home screen, the entirely new version of Control Center, a look at Apple's new intelligence features, and so much more that Apple didn't even talk about. So welcome to iOS 18 and the all new home screen, where for the first time in iPhone history, you can freely drag app icons around, and they are no longer locked to the top of your display. You can make designs just like this, a circle on the home screen, for example, and it will stay like that no matter what page you're on or where you go. But if you're like me, something that you've always wanted to do on your iPhone is the ability to change the way that the icons look. Well, in iOS 18, there's a new option to edit and customize your display in a way that you've never been able to before, including a brand new all dark icons view for Apple's apps. Or if you wanna change the look of every single app on your iPhone, there's a crazy new UI for changing everything. And this applies to all of the apps on your iPhone, which admittedly is really easy to make things look ugly. I am shocked that Apple has introduced the ability to just change the way that every single app looks like you're kind of in a Photoshop for your home screen. But let's say you can't find the exact color that you want. Well, that's why Apple has added this eyedrop feature where you can drag it around your wallpaper. And let's say I want this really specific shade of light pink at the bottom of my screen. Well, when I select that, it has now applied that color palette to my entire app library here. To be honest though, my favorite look so far is just the dark mode version of all of Apple's app icons. Speaking of apps, what if there's something on your phone that you don't want other people to know even exists? Well, for the first time in iOS 18, you can lock apps and require Face ID. You tap on that first option right there, it scans in your face to confirm that you are the one doing this. So the next time that you go back to Snapchat and you try to open it, it just says that Face ID is required. Now in iOS 18, in addition to locking apps, you can also completely hide them. When you tap on that second option, right there and you scan in your face, it's gonna give you a pop-up of what exactly hiding this app means. First, it's gonna blur out the app icon and name and you will not get any notifications from this app because then it would tell other people that you have it installed. When you hide it, it's now pushed to a very secret page at the bottom of your app library at the end of your home screen. And when you tap on this, as you would guess, the only way to get it is again with face ID or passcode. But you cannot see that the apps in there exist and if you even try to search for them, like I wanna find my Snapchat app, oh, it's, it's not on my iPhone because it doesn't exist exist until I go to the bottom, I tap on that right there, and I scan in my face, and the app's hidden up here. That feature alone may have been the number one request for the iPhone since it has released, and I can't believe it's actually here. Now, back on the home screen, Apple's made some other nice updates as well, like the ability to on the fly resize widgets. You can drag it there or make it even the largest size, like so. And this all happens in real time. You can shrink it back down and get your previous layout back without messing up your entire design. And speaking of design, let me show you the entirely new version of Control Center, which Apple has redesigned in a really big way, starting off with the new favorites page, which now, just like the home screen when you tap and hold, is fully customizable with adjustments to widgets and controls. For example, just like on the widgets section, you can make this as big or as small as you want on the fly. And most exciting is the ability to add controls directly to here with a new controls library. Pressing and holding on these controls adds the expanded view as well. This is sort of like your main previous control center setup. You can press and hold again to see more details about all of these. Press and hold on the music widget to get an improved music player with a new AirPlay UI that doesn't really seem to be that much better right now. But most notable probably is the new pages that Apple has added. Like right here is a lot of your default controls and when you press and hold again, you've got room to drag all of these wherever you want. Again, they're not locked to the top, just like your home screen. The next page after that is the dedicated media player. Below that, you've got all of your home controls where they are no longer auto-suggested, they will just all show up here. And finally, on the last page, there's kind of your default controls in case you would somehow get rid of that widget and you need to quickly go into something like airplane mode or Wi-Fi. And controls have been a big topic as well forever on the lock screen because Apple has had these two toggles here that for whatever reason, you just can't change. Well, that is until today, guys, because in iOS 18, when you press and hold, tap on customize and go to the lock screen, you can remove both of these, tap on the plus icon and select any controls for your lock screen toggles. Let's say I want voice memos there on the left and then over on the right, I do a ton of Shazam -y. Well, Now when I hit done and I go back to my lock screen, you've got fully customized options. And keep in mind, you can still swipe over
over to use your camera. So you've got all the same functionality as before. Basically, you've just got more customization about what you use your lock screen to quickly access. But if there's one thing about iOS 18 that I think has shocked everyone, it's all of the new Apple intelligence features that Apple announces. They finally showed off their crazy selection of AI features and changes and the new version of Siri, which unfortunately is not included in iOS 18 beta one. So while Apple showed off some crazy things like a new UI for Siri, the ability to know context and personal details while keeping all of that locked down, private and secure, and the ability to hand general queries better with a chat GPT integration. As of right now, no one can actually test these things on device. We just kind of have to trust Apple and they say that they're coming out in beta later this year. But if you want to see that Siri as soon as it comes out, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I will be covering it extensively here on Apple Track. So let me show you a ton of the other features that Apple has added to apps like the Messages app in which for the first time you can schedule messages to send later. So if you want to text somebody, but maybe not right now, you can tap to schedule that message with a familiar picker. It will send it at that exact time. You can see it even shows up with a new UI right there to indicate it's not been sent yet. It's just going to be sent then. And you can edit it in retrospect if you want. You can also be more expressive with the tap back reactions. Now they're colored for the first time. And you can also select individual stickers or emojis of your choosing. Anything that you want, including custom stickers that you've made, like inside jokes with friends can now be reacted like so. Even plain text messages are now going to be more fun with a full on built in text editor. You can bold, italic, underline things. And now you can do text effects for just specific words. So I can go to my text editor just for this word in particular, and it will add explode reactions, bloom, jitter. These are all new options in iOS 18 that'll make things a bit more expressive when you send it, and it animates in chat like so. Okay, next up, an entirely new app is Apple has added a passwords app for all of your iCloud keychain things that were previously hidden in settings. It is basically so much easier to see things from two-factor authentication, your general passwords, your specific pass key, it's all here rather than buried in the settings app, which has also been a little bit redesigned, but not as dramatic as we thought. There's been a light rearranging of where things are with battery now at the very top. General has a massive section telling you exactly what you'll find in here. And it just seems way less convoluted in this main area that used to go on forever. Apple's combined that endless list of apps now into a separate section that you can sort by going up or down here on the side. And while we're in settings, let me show you the new wallpapers that Apple has added. There's not a ton here, but for iOS 18, there are four different styles. We have the standard version, something a bit more yellow and azure, as well as the final purple option. So four different options here, but not the most exciting wallpaper if I had to rate it. I'm shocked that Apple did not mention the major calendar updates that they made. Not only is the UI a little bit different, I think it looks nicer. They have baked in reminders so they communicate with the calendar app now. You can complete reminders and view them on your list of daily activities. And if you haven't completed something yet, it'll even show up on your home screen in the calendar widget. With the app with the biggest changes in iOS 8, are the new Photos app, which this is what it looks like now when you launch it up. It doesn't just throw you entirely in your app grid. You can return to that with the same sorting and easy view features that they had before. But now there's recent days, which Apple has auto selected. There's people and pets. It's sort of like a homepage for your photos rather than the tab view we had before. Apple highlights things like your memories more prominently, and there's even selected trips that automatically show up, which it's done actually a pretty good job of all these specific trips that I took last year. It knows when you leave home. Home. At the bottom of your screen here, you've got a new option for some filters. For example, if you just want to see like edited photos specifically, it'll just show you all of these things that are your specific edited photos. And this is actually one of the apps that Apple has where they can start to show some Apple intelligence things. Like if I want to see pictures of myself and my friend Adam, it will find images from a super long time ago, like 2017 of me and my friend Adam in it. Look, there we are right there. That's crazy how it just found that instantly. And those are just the pre-selected options. I can literally go back and type 10 years ago and it will find photos that are literally some of the first on my entire iPhone. Next up, the Notes app got some big updates in iOS 18, like the ability to finally record audio directly into Notes. You can start your recording it just like that. And while that alone would be very nice, especially for a student maybe taking lectures, well, Apple can now transcribe it on device immediately. Right below is the transcript. You tap on that and then the speech icon right here and you can see exactly what I said in this note. It's now 
now baked in outside of the Voice Memos app. The Notes app can also do math for the first time, even if it's a little bit complex. As soon as you input the equal sign, it'll give you the correct answer to the equation following the standard order of operations. And this is a small one, but the Notes app can finally highlight text to your color of choosing, like so, to make things stand out a bit more in your page. But it's not just calculations in the Notes app, it's calculations in the brand new Calculator app, which you can see now has a history of all of your math. So you can type in whatever you want, and it automatically goes in a little bit of a tape right here on the left side, so you can reference things that you calculated in the past. What it's really down here at the bottom left of the calculator gets super powerful, like the scientific section, which can now be used in portrait orientation. But what I'll be using the most is the new convert feature, where you can select exactly whether you want to convert things like currency, data, energy, force, fuel. This is all built into the stock calculator apps. You can now do things like centimeters to meters right inside of here and it does it immediately. Oh, and of course, this all now comes to the iPad with the new version of the calculator app specifically made for iPad OS 2. Apple also made a quiet but really important change for gaming in iOS 18 because they've added a brand new game mode that they say improves the frame rate performance over the course of hours when you're playing a game because they reduce background activity to a bare minimum. Apple is also bringing spatial audio to gaming with AirPods in iOS 18 and they even say that they reduce the latency for controllers Moving on now to the wallet app, you can't really see any of the changes that Apple made on device yet, but ticketing, for example, for concerts is supposed to be way more rich with stadium or event details and a better looking ticket experience. You can now tap two iPhones together to exchange an Apple cash payment, which is pretty cool because previously you could only do this by sending text messages. Okay, so those are the biggest changes that I wanna show you so far in iOS 18. I just had to show you the new icons and the look and the rearranged control center, which is also insane. It is the biggest iPhone update in ever or a very long time, and I'm so happy with everything that Apple changed. So if you are too, drop a like on this video. It really helps me out, and hit subscribe for more videos on iOS 18 very, very soon. Okay, I've been Sam. I'm gonna keep playing around with this. I'll be back with more hidden features very shortly. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.